guys, welcome back to our 13th edition of Free Motion Friday, where we are quilting our way through scripture. I cannot believe that we have done so many sessions already together. This has been a lot of fun to journey with you as we create some free motion designs inspired by God's word. So today we are going to be making a design inspired by um, a book. We'll show you that here in a moment. Um, but the design itself looks a lot like flowers. Let's take a look at it. So our design today is called An Abundance of Flowers, and it's inspired by Isaiah 35, which is written about God's restoration of the land and of the people of all nations after the final judgment. Now, I'm not necessarily ready for the final judgment, not yet. <laughs> I feel like I have too many things I still want to get done and accomplish, but I am ready for that restorative hand. You know, we, we as a people, as, a, as an entire world, have just been through so much, and we are still going through so much. And I feel like I just, I want that, that restorative hand to come. I want that, that abundance of flowers to come. I want these dry desert days to just come to an end and just be filled with the glory and the beauty. Um, I'm, I'm ready for God's hand to, to bring us there. So let's take a look at how we're going to be making our flowers of abundance today. There are three tips in creating these flowers. Number one, this works somewhat like a meandering line. So you want to make sure you're not overlapping. You also want to make sure you hit a clean pivot point at the center of each flower. Lastly, you'll want to determine how many petals you want on each flower before you start. Now, when you think about the petals, you're going to want to think, do you want to have the same style of flower repeating itself? Like for example, do you want to do five petals on all your flowers? Or do you maybe want to do one with four and then one with five and then one with seven? That's up to you, but that's something you'll want to think about before you sit down at your machine. Because again, this is where that muscle memory is going to set in. And if you just think about, say you're doing five, one, two, three, four, five, as you go through it, that's going to be a lot more consistent than if you uh, don't predetermine how many you're going to do, because then you might end up with some with four, some with six. And if that's not your intended look, you're probably not going to be happy with how it turns out. Let's get sewing. So quick supply check. I've got some green sulky thread in here. I'm going to play off the green in this fabric. I thought it was fun to pull a fabric that actually has little flowers in it with five little uh, petals on there. So you'll actually, I wanna look at this fabric here with you for a minute. You'll see if you look at the flowers, they're not identical. Like this flower has um, a larger petal. These have some smaller ones. Here's a flower that has a big one right next to a small one. This is a or very organic feel. And that's because flowers are organic. They're gonna be different in feel. And yours are too. You're gonna have some flowers that is, no matter how hard you try to make them exact, they're going to vary a bit. And that's okay because that's part of nature. So I think this will be a fun fabric to sew on today. So again, that green thread is going to play off the little green in the centers. Hopefully it'll give a little bit of contrast for you guys as you watch. Obviously at the end, we'll take a look at the green on the back of the white, which will be a great contrast. Um, I've got my slow steady glider mat here. Um, here's a link if you need to clean yours. And I've got my hopper foot. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already pulled up my bottom thread, so we are ready to go there. So uh, I'm going to start just with a little bit of a meander and I'm going to be doing probably five flower petals. Now one note I did make is I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn the camera angle here for a second. I did modify the speed on my machine to be a little bit slower. So um, I found when I was kind of practicing this, just, you know, checking my settings earlier that I wanted to move a little quickly. And what this is doing and this, is, this, uh, this setting is doing is it's making it so it's a lot harder for me to quickly whip around the turns. So if you have a speed setting on your machine, you may want to set it just slightly slower. So I'm going to start here at the top, grab my threads. Like I said, I'm just going to meander ever so slightly. Get out of that corner. And you'll see I am meandering slower than usual because I don't, um, I do have a speed setting on my machine. So I'm going to come here with my first pedal and I'm going to make that a nice big swing out, returning back to the center each time. That's the most important part of making a flower is, is, is coming back to that center. If you don't come back to your center, you're just going to end up with kind of loops that don't make a whole lot of sense. There's four and five. Okay, and we'll come out of that. You know what I'm probably going to do? I'm going to actually pause here for a minute. And I'm going to flip over and we're going to do this on the reverse side. I think it'll be easy for both of us to see. So I'll pull up our bottom thread, 
get that out of the way, and then let's try sewing this together from here. So in order to hide this little spot here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just pop a flower right here. So to do that, you'll see I'm gonna just come right back down the stem a little bit. Oh, this is so much easier to see. There's two, three, four, five. And I'll clip those threads in a bit. It's so much easier for me to see, probably a lot easier for you to see too. See, look at, I'll pause here for a second. Look at, you can already see how much cleaner this flower is over this one where I just couldn't even see where those threads were ending up. So let's do one more together and then we'll speed things up. Now, I don't wanna end up too specific with my rows, but I am gonna do one more here. We'll probably come up and then we'll start meandering down towards the bottom. So let's, let's come over. We'll add another one right here. So here's my first petal. Making a smaller flower this time. And I wanna kind of vary the size of my flowers. The only thing I wanna be consistent about is five petals. So I'm gonna add one more petal down here to make five. And I'm gonna come right back out the same way I went in. And again, that's another nice thing about this pattern. And I'll pause here for a second again. Let me rotate my fabric here. You'll see with the flowers, you can come out across, you can come out in the same place. So there's a lot of flexibility when you're making your little flowers with how you wanna stitch. Now, one thing obviously you don't wanna do is do what I'm doing. You'll see every time I'm pausing, I'm pausing in the middle of my rows. When you pause in the middle of your meander, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with your needle going through your fabric multiple times, and that's gonna create these stop and start marks. You'll see I'm gonna have one right here again. Um, if you need to pause, it's a much smarter move to pause at the center of your flower. So, you know, go to where you wanna make a flower, then take your pause and then start back up because then those threads will be hidden in your flower. You're not going to see them in the middle of your vine like this, okay? So I'm gonna speed things up a bit and we will meet up with you once we're done. how it turned out. So here's the front. Um, you can see um, it's a not as simple to show up the green as I thought it was going to be. In my mind, the green was just going to really pop against the red. And instead, what it's done is it's kind of created almost like a fading, like there's a discoloration. So looking back, I think I would probably have been better served doing my usual tone on tone, you know, using a red thread on a red fabric. I feel like you can never go wrong with tone on tone. Um, because I don't, I don't love the look. Now what the green does, and it's probably harder for you to see it where you are, but the green, when I look at it, it does, it does draw my eye to these little teeny tiny green centers of the flower. But you know, overall, it just looks like I've got discoloration marks on the fabric. So I don't really like that. Um, obviously on the back, it's a different story. So let's take a look at the back. I think these just Daisy chains, if you will, are so super cute and they're very springy. You know, it's springtime here in San Diego and it's just a good time to do these. So let's let's pick this one apart a little bit. So you'll see here's where we started and we kind of came into our little daisy chains and the flowers themselves just kind of meander all the way through. And I really like the way they look and feel. You know, much like uh, the petals on the front here, we'll take a close look at these. You can see there's petals of different sizes within the same flower. I mean, there's a very small petal. Here's a very much larger petal. My flowers on the back have a similar feel to that. I've got some larger petals and I've got some smaller petals mixed within my flowers. So it's a very cohesive feel, I feel like, from front to back. So let's pick some of the flowers apart now. Um, you know, I found for me that this pattern was a great next step because if you think about it, we practiced both meandering when we did wandering. Pop that link up here. And then we also practiced loops last week when we did the Alleluia fabric. And I'll also pop that link up here too so you can check that tutorial out. This today was a combination of those two skills. And it was a lot harder than I think I thought it was going to be. 
because again, you really had to make sure you were having some consistency when you were making all of your little tiny daisy chains, all those abundance of flowers. And the consistency overall for mine is pretty good. Um, you'll see that first one. This is that one I struggled with when I really couldn't see where I was going. So um, again, when you were doing, when I was doing that, that green thread on the red fabric, it wasn't as enough of a contrast and I genuinely couldn't tell where the lines had been. So by flipping this over and sewing on the reverse side, I was very much more clearly able to see where my thread lines were. So this flower looks better. Um, actually, all the little flowers look better than that, that first one when we couldn't see. You know, they're all pretty consistent in shape and size, and that's good. Let's take a look at this guy. This guy didn't turn out so well, and I think there's two reasons why. The first reason is, um, it was one of the main reasons we talked about when we talked about how to do this pattern. I didn't return to the center each time. So you'll see what happened is, here's where my center was, and then I made a second center a little bit lower, so it drew the length of the flower down. Now what that happens is it ends up looking less like a daisy and more like, are those petunias? Those little purple flowers? They've got the little you know yellow and white on them, and they've kind of got like those, those two longer petals, almost like jowls on them. I'll think of what they are, and, and I'll, I'll have to write it. I'll write it over here when I realize. But uh, it looks a little bit more like that because I, I miss coming back to that dead center. Whereas on all the others, you'll see when you return to the center, even if your petals are different sizes, they still look like little daisies going all the way through. You know, something else I don't love. Um, this is a little jumpy right here. I told you I had slowed the pace of my needle down and I'm, I'm, I'm still happy I did that. I think with anything in life, you know, there's, there's pros and cons. I think a con to having so slowed my needle pace down so my sewing speed down was that um, it made it a little bit more jumpy when I was doing the long meandering stretches. Now it obviously though did serve me very well when I was making my flower petals because I'm not ending up with too many stitches as I'm very slowly going around and trying to make those curves. So that's number one. Uh, number two is while it is absolutely a possibility that you can come in and go out of the same spot, I don't love the way it looks. I feel like this poor little flower, he's kind of floating out here all on his own. You know, it just kind of looks like he came up and then we came back out. I think he would have been better served if I had kind of come in here and then maybe exited on this side and come back down. I could have achieved that same effect of getting this little flower up in the corner where I had some dead space without having, um, without feeling like he was just kind of left high and dry. So there you have it. You have an abundance of flowers. So, you know, obviously, probably like you, I hope we all have a lot of time left here together. Um, I hope the final judgment, final coming is not for many more years. And I hope that we can all find and feel God's grace in whatever desert we're in. I hope we can find the joy and see that abundance of flowers everywhere we go. So happy Friday. If you guys got some good tips from today, I would love to see a like down. Let me know what you think. Let me know what other flowers of abundance you have in your life today. And we will see you in the next video. Take care.